A week ago last Thursday, I took the day off and I went down to Missoula to speak at a hearing in front of the Missoula County Commission, which in itself is a good test to see if the various medications that you are on happen to be working. And I found out mine were. Notwithstanding the hearing that followed, the drive down was utterly magnificent with the snow-capped Mission Mountains simply glorious. And in the midst of that trip south to the Garden City, I could not help but recall many years ago the previous road upon which in this area people would drive their cars having bumper stickers on them that said, pray for me, I drive Highway 93. <laughs> Some of those pleas still continue if you're driving south from Missoula. But for a good portion of this road, we enjoy a remarkable route, which had employed in its inception a tone of design called a spirit of place. And so for a little while this morning, I want to talk about that highway, primarily because I think there's a pretty good Advent theme contained within. Now, if you've been in Montana for less than one decade, you don't remember the old highway, and for that you should count yourself blessed. It was pretty much a nightmare in numerous places. Today, however, in those last 10 or 15 miles before you hit the interstate uh, in which you go east to Missoula or west over to Spokane, while certainly not perfect, compared to what was there, it is utterly stunning. It's so much so that it strikes me as a modern day rendition of valleys lifted up of mountains and hills made low, the uneven becoming level, and the rough places a plain, using that imagery out of the reading that we heard from the prophet Isaiah. It's exquisite in not only is there a great surface upon which to drive, but also there are multiple passing lanes and for safety the highway is fenced. And there are 41 fairly sophisticated crossings, one above grade that is just magnificent and the others below for wild animals to travel from one side to the other without getting hit. And celebrating the fact that this was a widely applauded act of collaboration between the Confederate Salish Kootenai tribes, the state of Montana, and the United States government, interpretive signs are found in Salish and English along the way, giving the historical Native American names for streams and rivers and mountains and towns with their translation. To go from having the reputation with statistics backing it up, from being a portion of the most dangerous road in the United States to one that really is quite a work of art was not easy. Besides just all of the discussions between the Flathead Indian Reservation and the various highway departments involved, the planning not only had to bridge two cultures, but also at the tribe's insistence, be respectful of all the land and the animals upon which it came in contact. And so it became an interesting image, when you think about it, reflective of our reading that we had from Isaiah as well as that from Mark concerning John the Baptist. In terms of the highway, something that was seen as an absolute mess two decades ago to something that was now quite different was front and center. After a lot of deliberation, a combined voice of those with the spiritual gifts of prophecy and admonition stepped in and they moved folks from the old to the new. That was right around the year 2000. And then four years later, this came this boatload of disruption in the lives of the collected community using it during construction. One often felt that maybe going from Missoula to Kalispell via Chicago or Seattle would have saved time. It was that much of a mess. And in places, despite contractors' best efforts, the construction could drive people nearly berserk. In short, it was a painful project to endure. At least it was in my memory when I would go south to Missoula. Put this all in another way. 
when all of the state, national, tribal, civil engineering, and environmental folks were called to respond to the need to build a better road, there also had to be this commitment to let go with the old and embrace a vision of the new long prior to actually enjoying a fresh, fresh expression of Highway 93 as we travel today. And as we all know, any time you move from the old to the new, it can be utterly jarring. Now, think for a moment about John the Baptist. He had a gift to really appreciate the fact that things in the lives of people were amiss. That particular road was broken when it came to spirituality. The, the law constantly reminded the Jews of their shortcomings. The Roman present drew attention to the fact that Israel was under oppressive occupation. And then top it off with the fact there were all of those sins. Approaching this himself, John, according to a fairly reliable school of thought, belonged to a community that practiced regular ritualistic washing to deal with the transgressions that would build up in the course of the day. For some of these, religious intentional washing was daily or even more frequently, especially prior to eating. And while that sounds pretty well normal for all of us, their take on it was not about getting the dirt and the germs out from underneath their fingernails, but rather it was to purify oneself of sin and to accomplish righteous behavior and living. Some of that thought had to be in the mind of John as he baptized people. Folks needed to be cleansed of their sin in order to be in a right relationship with God. And that had to happen again and again and again and again. And we get that too. It is sort of like saying the old road is a mess and we need to tear it up and fix it. But here's something quite different concerning John's message. Despite his baptism of water, he pointed to those who came to him, another whose purpose was beyond their regular comprehension. Coming their ways in terms that they had never seen was one who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit and not water. Water did indeed wash away the sins, but this Holy Spirit would wash away their isolation from one another and from God. If the business of the Holy Spirit is to bring those estranged into unity, and it is, then Christ coming among them was gloriously welcome news because it would bring folks together. Now, jump back to the road for just a moment. It was a brand new vision that the whole ecosystem concerning plants and land and animals, not to mention the Native American and non-Native populations, were called to be drawn together in a construction project to respect the dignity of the entire creation. And if you don't mind the spiritual crossing into the secular, that's an example of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, whether we call it that or not. But. In anything new coming our way, there is always, always, always a construction phase. For us up here driving cars, that started 13 years ago when our traveling on temporary byways through road work was simply turbulent. 2,000 years ago, for those back then, their construction phase began with Jesus turning his face toward Jerusalem, heading to the temple with the express purpose of turning the world on its head and flipping two millennia of old established religious practice, laws, thoughts, and conventions absolutely upside down. If you were going to replace a reliance on the law with a new understanding of God's grace and faithfulness, then something had to give. What was there needed to be torn up, and that their metaphorical old road in a nutshell, was humanity's trying to make it on its own, establishing by their works a perceived acceptance by God. Since these works 
also encompasses pride. Giving this up was not then, nor is it today, ever easy. The discipline of dropping our ways for the salvific action of Christ is sometimes not unlike trying to navigate during those times of construction, which in Montana, they say, is the other season besides winter. We get used to it, sort of. A couple of years ago, in a trip back to Big Fork from Great Falls, I approached a section of Highway 200 just west of Rogers Pass and east of Lincoln. Been driving that road, at least driving on that road since 1958. And there it was, construction. Oh, no, I grumbled. I needed to get home. And I needed construction, kind of like I needed an ingrown toenail. But today, there it is, another level road with wide shoulders, passing lanes, and it is fenced with crossings underneath it to protect the animals, not to mention people driving cars and trucks. Advent calls us to not just endure the construction phases in our lives, but to actually step out and call it forth. To stand in the middle of our community and cry out that we know of a new way, a way that is filled with grace and love and acceptance, not to mention a radical notion of forgiveness of sins and the absolute defeat of death for everyone, everyone, and no exceptions. We see it in Jesus. And therefore, Advent and the church really beckons to all. If you are willing to endure a bumpy road in tossing out your old and embracing the newness of God. Boy, do we ever have a deal for you. Amen. Mm -hmm.